Hey guys, Melissa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this butterfly necklace from start to finish. I'll show you how I sketch out the template, make all my scrolls and swirls, construct the necklace, and bring it all together. To make this easier for some folks, I do have a link down in the description to my Etsy shop where I'm providing a template for this design. You can download it, print it out, and then it'll be easier for you to follow along with this tutorial. So if you want to see how I make this, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. All right, so let's get started. So I've made this butterfly pendant before and I'm just gonna kind of recreate it. Pretty large necklace. You can even wear it as a belt if you wanted to. It's pretty long. So I grabbed another turquoise bead here, teardrop shape, and it is 22 by 13. So I chose this one because I like the pattern and the texture in it. I'm gonna sketch my butterfly shape around this. This is going to be one wire here, coming up, making the antenna. It's going to be another wire. And this will be another wire. I'm not going to bother drawing the other side because I'm going to make this side and then replicate it. That's basically the pattern. Just two S swirls. Okay, so I'm going to use some 16 gauge round copper wire to make the butterfly frame. Just going to pull it out, try to get the kinks out with my nylon jaw pliers. If you're curious what tools I'm using, I have all that down in the description if you want to check that out. I'm going to follow my little template here, take some round nose pliers, I'm going to start to shape it. Right. That should could be enough, I can cut off any excess when I'm done shaping. Make my first swirly. I'm just going to press the end here to point it, make it a little bit pointy. I like to use flat nose pliers too to shape my swirls. Kind of gently curve it. And pinch it and press it. You can use your stone to shape it, or you can find out something round to shape it around. My stone's doing a pretty good job. You just want to make it slightly bigger than your stone. Try to use this marker here. Kind of stretch it out a little bit. That looks pretty good. Bend that outward. I'm going to cut a little bit off. I might have to cut more off, but we'll find out. Of course, I want it to match this side.
looks pretty good. Of course, it's all wonky. It's not flat. So we're going to pound it out a little bit. I just want to make the rest of our swirls. Once again, I'm going to taper it, forming my swirl with the round nose pliers. Gently pull it, make a nice smooth curve. That looks pretty good. My swirl goes around a little bit longer than this swirl. I think that's fine. Close enough, but I'm going to try to mimic this one. It's pretty close. I'm going to start swirling. looks pretty good. Just gotta match this one up with this first one here and I'll be all set to hammer. Looks pretty close. Let me lay it out. Flip that guy over. I'll flip this guy over. So that's what we're looking at. Next, what I want to do is I want to hammer them out a little bit. So I don't want hammer marks in them. I just want to flatten them. So I'm just trying to flare some areas without having dents, if you get what I'm saying.
Now that I pounded them out to my satisfaction, I'm gonna shine them up before I tie them together. Okay, so I hammered them and I gave them all a good buffing. I still have a few hammer marks in there, but there's like little ridges and hammer marks that I get from the steel block and stuff. But I would like to tumble them. I'm not going to tumble just these. I'm going to go ahead and make my links. According to the picture of the other butterfly I made with the necklace, I made it pretty long. And I had about 50, 50, 50 little figure eight links in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. I'm using 18 gauge wire. They're each gonna be an inch. I'm gonna cut my wire flush. And cut an inch. Okay. And I'm gonna cut 50 of these. So I'll be back. Okay, so there's my 50. I got 50 one inch pieces, 18 gauge. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make figure eights out of them, just like this. And then I'm gonna twist them. Cinch them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make 50 of these links. It'll probably take me a while, so I'll be back. All right, so what I ended up doing, I made 10 sets of five, and then I tumbled everything to get a head start at getting the scuffs out and stuff. Tumbling burnishes them a little bit, work hardens them. So I did a little bit of that ahead of time. And I have these five link sections here, and they're all gonna be separated by my turquoise bead links. But before we make our chain, let's get these all connected. I'm going to need to make a connection here, 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 same on the other side, and then tie these together here, and then attach my bead. And I'm going to use 20 gauge for that, 20 gauge round. But the hole in my bead is very small. Only 22 gauge will accommodate that. So let's get going and connect everybody. I'm not sure how much I'll need, so I'm just gonna cut the wire off at uh, reasonable lengths, about six inches. All right, where should we go first? And I'm gonna use as much help as I can get holding on to these things. I'm going to use a clamp. And bring it up through here. Make sure that's snug.
add another piece here. Make sure you know which side is the front. Yeah, that's the front. Okay, then I'll do these two. All right, so everybody's connected. And I feel the back, make sure there's no snags from those ends. Make sure they're all tucked away. Look at that, I made a boo-boo right there. Hold on, let me try to fix that. All right, all better. I was wondering why it was looking a little off. So once that's done, we gotta connect right here, and then we gotta add our bead. Let me grab another piece. 20 gauge. I'm going to start it on the antenna and go down. Sneak that down. I'd like to bring this guy up and start wrapping it around this antenna. I'm going to need 22 gauge. That's the largest gauge I can fit. Right. I'm going to feed that through. Get it about in the center. And I'm going to lock this guy out. I can probably keep going until I fill that gap which would probably be a good idea so it doesn't slide. All right, just keep doing that. And I'll meet you back here in a second. Okay, so we're all connected. Next, we have bead links to make. 20 gauge wire accommodates them, so I'm gonna use that. I think three inches of wire per bead link should suffice. Grab your round nose pliers. Make a loop. I'm making wrapped loops for these. side like that and then attach one of the links or one of the chain links just like that 
keep on making bead links for each of the chain links and that's five on each side and I'll be back. All right, so we're in the home stretch now. My butterfly, I've got my bead links and my chain links all connected. Equal amounts on both sides. So this ended up being super long. It's like 28 inches. So you can uh, subtract some, you know, sections if you want it a lot shorter. So all we have left is a clasp and I want to make a little bead dangle as well. But first, if I left this bead link like this, it'll eventually come off. So we need to block that. So all you need to do is push some wires together. These two right here would be the easiest for me. I'm just kind of pushing together nice and snug so they block that dangle. Same on this side. Kind of pinch them, overlap a little, and then bring them out so they're nice and tight. So that way your chain doesn't fall off. And let's go ahead and make a clasp. I already have a jump ring. This is 16 gauge. Nice large jump ring. Attach that to one end. All we have left is the clasp, the swan clasp. So I'm gonna cut off about three inches or so. I'm not measuring. You don't have to be super precise. Start off with round nose pliers. And I'm going to start a swirl. swirl nice and tight not real tight but when I get across the top here I'm gonna point it to the right get my round nose pliers bring it back around to the left down here where the beak, I guess, would meet the neck. I'm gonna bring it back out again. Of course, that's too long, so I'm gonna need to snip that. I'll do that right about there. And then you're gonna need a file. Smooth out that end. If you have a rotary tool of some sort or a flex shaft, you can kind of sand that down. And also to go along with the butterfly, I want to pound that out as well. So I just realized I didn't press record. Oh, so just like the double loop bead links, I just made a single loop dangle with a turquoise bead and I hung it off the end here at the jump ring. So we have a little decorative bead dangle that hangs off that in the back. We are done with the construction of the necklace. All I need to do is oxidize it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be back to show you how it looks. All right, well, here she is. All finished. It did end up pretty long, so if you want a shorter version, just take out some sections. All right, so that's it for me. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.